Okay, so with your small weights ready, just at the edge of the mat, come and stand in the middle of your mats. Just take your feet hip width apart, a little wiggle on the toes. Thinking about the arches underneath the feet, so just a little bit of tension there, lift at those arches, soften the knees, tucking the pelvis under. Then finding that pelvic floor, pulling in, you've got that kind of front bit from the pubic bone towards your centre. And then there's like a bit of a back bit, so the coccyx, and that tends to come in play when you're tucking the pelvis under. So pulling the coccyx back towards that centre point. Notice if you're holding your breath, because I just noticed that totally, I just was pulling all that in, I didn't breathe. So just check you're just breathing normally. Then find the belly button and just draw it back to the spine and also a little bit of hollowing down to the hips. Then just lift the shoulders, take them down and back. Find some length at the back of the neck. So beginning just to stand tall, palms facing forwards. Gives that opening on the chest. Helps you to take the shoulders back. Think about the crown of the head going and shining up towards the ceiling. So it's hard because I know you might be looking down at the screen, but just see if you can look down with your eyes, not with the whole of the head and the chin. So here we are, nice, good posture. So take the pelvic floor and TVA 100%, take a really big squeeze and try not to hold the breath. Hold that squeeze and we're gonna go 10 seconds, keep breathing and we'll do it three times. So big squeeze, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Take a slow release, completely release those muscles and then pull in again, take the 100%. Pelvic floor, TVA, try not to hold the breath, get the shoulders relaxed, the jaw relaxed. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, keep breathing, two, one, take a slow release. Last time, 100% pulling in, finding just a little bit of focus. Notice if you're holding that breath, or if you're holding any tension anywhere in the body, this is a good time just to check in with the body. Maybe release a little bit on the feet because if you're scrunching up your toes, let's just try and find a bit of grounding with this last one. So spreading the toes, Relax the feet, pulling in pelvic floor, TVA, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, keep breathing, five, four, three, two, one. Slow, release it down just to engagement connection, so 50% drawing in, and we're gonna take the breathing exercise. Breathing in through your nose, lift the arms up to shoulder height, scrunch up the fist. Breathing in again, open. Breathing in again, lift. Breathing out, release the fingers and lower. Breathing in, breathing in, and in again, and release. And you can take this at your own pace, so as fast as you like. Thinking about this in-breath, like fresh oxygen, fresh energy, fresh start, whatever you need. Such a good exercise, this, to energize. Breathing in through the nose and then release. You can release out through the mouth. You can take a if you want. H A ha. <laughs> so I'm actually not doing it because I'm talking, so in a minute I'll join in. Again, just take it at your own pace. Doesn't have to match me. So Starting to feel a little bit of energy. We'll add in, so we lift and on the hardest release, take the hands down to the floor and then coming back up. So it's almost like a roll down, kind of a big release. Drawing the chest down towards the thighs, bend the knees. Just notice and check the knees, don't pronate in when they bend. See if you can go down, just touch the floor. If you've had anything negative or frustrating, just completely see so if you can let this go with that release. Does it really matter? Keep 
working with those three in breaths, bending the knees for the release. Three more. Last one. And then release, come up to standing. Hopefully you feel refreshed. If you've got your weights, you're gonna pick up your weights at this point, place them in your hands. We're gonna go for some side bends. So feet hip width apart. So just check your neutral pelvis tucked under. The shoulders aren't leaning forwards too much or not like arching our back backwards. Just a really simple slide the hand to the side of the knee. And if you can, you've got these weights there in your hands. You can think about the ear going down as well if you want to work into the neck. So it becomes like a real full body side bend. And going back down to the feet again. So try not to hold the tension there in the feet. So just see if now, you've obviously got to lift the arches up, but just see if you can let the feet relax a little bit. So there's that little bit of grounding down towards the, the mat. Now I'm going quite fast. You don't have to go at my pace. It's breathing in, lift, breathing out to lower. Shoulders are relaxed. And you can kind of see if you can get the hand down to the side of the knee. So you can just start playing with how far you go. Sliding the hands down. Try and keep the hips still. And come back, notice pelvic floor and TVA. Just check that you're still pulling in on that 50%. Option to add in here, you could take a double. So it's pulse. Recenter and then pulsing side, center, then over, and then just two. Just notice when you recenter that you come fully back up to center. <laughs> just those nice little doubles. Keep the knees a little bit soft. Keep coming back to pelvic floor and TVA. So go. One more each side. Sliding the hand down. <laughs> then release, come up to centre. Now a little bit of a challenge is we're going to lift one arm up to the side, level up with the shoulder and lower. So it's just a lateral raise and again you can do this without the weights. Think about the shoulders down away from the ears. So as you lift this shoulder up, the shoulder isn't coming up to the ear, so it's down, shoulders are down. So we're going to add to this, it's just lifting the opposite leg. <laughs> this is a balance, just to like a star position, so opposite arm, opposite leg. You can keep that leg nice and straight. Thinking now about the core, so pull in, pelvic floor, pull in, TVA. And again, just try and keep those shoulders down and back. Notice if you're doing any tilting, are you tilting in the shoulders? Are you wobbling there in the hips? Use the big toe to help you with your balance. One more, let's swap sides. Do a couple with the arms to start with, just to warm that up, shoulders down and back. Then you can just go in straight at that leg, opposite arm to leg, and it might take you a couple just to get that stability. Just breathing out lift, breathing in lower. And again, use that big toe if you're balanced, use the pelvic floor. A little bit of a squeeze on the glutes here as well. Tuck that tummy button in. So we can try like a pendulum now to add these two together. So you do one on this side and then you step onto the other leg and you go straight into the other side. So you've just got less time to kind of stabilize. So it's just like pendulum idea. It kind of reminds me of aquafit. I used to love the pendulums in the water. <laughs> So 
you've kind of just got to switch right into that balance. Notice what's happening with the shoulders, so try not to let the shoulders lift up to the ears. Keep pulling in and working with the core. Breathing out, lift. Again, just take it at your own breath, your own pace. You don't have to match with me. Two more. Last one. Then just plant the feet down, soften the knees, and just take an easy twist. And again, with or without weight. A little bit of pulling in on the core. Shoulders super relaxed for this. Quite a nice release for the shoulders. And you can take the look behind. There's a little bit of work into the neck. But do you keep pulling in on the core for your twist? Just a little bit safer for the lower back. Keep that connection there with the pelvic floor. Just relax the feet. Two more, breathing out. So, recentering. We're gonna circle the arms, so you can turn it so palms out, lift them up over the head, and again, with or without the weight, and then lowering them down, palms down. So turn, so you get this little bit of rotation on the shoulders, opening the chest. Lifting up and then it turns with the palms go down, lowering down. Now just notice like when you lift your arms up over your head if you're losing TVA. So pull in pelvic floor, pull in TVA because sometimes the arms go over the head, lose the core muscles, lower back arches. So just tuck the pelvis under, squeezing those glutes. and lower, and we're gonna to add to this. So as you go up, see if you can go up onto your toes and take a balance, and then lower. And we're gonna add a bit further. So we're gonna bend the knees, hips back into space, bring your weight, so your hands forwards to a squat. And then open, lifting up onto the toes, palms down, lowering down. Palms are facing down for the squat arms coming forward, so it's like a, a front raise for the shoulders, and then all the way around. Now you tell us again what's happening with your shoulders, so try not to let the shoulders lift up towards the ears, particularly on your front raise, so when you're coming down for your squat. Sideways arms, and make sure you're really sticking your hips back into space, shoulders coming over knees. I can't go, <laughs> I've got the wall. I better not start denting the wallpaper with my weights. <laughs> breathing in, lift up onto the toes. Breathing out down into the squat. Depending on how heavy you've picked up, you might be noticing now. <laughs> the arms, <laughs> particularly as you circle it round. Is that big base fan as well? Two more. Thinking about that, just that little rotation with the shoulders, so palms turning out as you circle. Lowering down, we did this one last week, so it's a shoulder press, so you need to bend the elbows, hands either scrunched up to space or hold your weights on your shoulders. Then you just lift that over the head, so like this full body stretch. Then you come back down to your shoulder press. Then you go down to a squat, but then you send your hips back to the back of the room and then lift your arms up to your cape position behind you. And then it's the same thing. We're gonna lift, then bend the knees, hips back, get a flat back. So we've been practicing flat backs a few times when we do our kind of forward folds. Come down, hips back, flat back. And you can kind of think about shoulders back, lift up the chest. It's almost like, uh, I think last week I used the ski jump, Eddie the Eagle, <laughs> ski jump position. Coming up. And again, notice again with feet, are you kind of really gripping the mat? So, so if you can let go of the feet just a little bit, 
watch the knees, check the knees, don't pronate it in as you do that. And also as you go up into your shoulder press and you go up to your full body stretch, oh, are you losing TVA? So notice again, you're pulling in tummy button. You're not arching the lower back as you lift, the pelvis is tucked under. Adding in a few juice, lift up onto the toes. So we get work with balance. Then hips back, go down to your cape. Then you can take a one leg and see if you can touch the floor. Switch legs. One leg back and then switch legs. Then straight up into shoulder press. Ooh. Then down into your ski jump. Then release. Then one leg, touch the floor. Then the other leg, touch the floor. All works with your balance. And lift. Come down, hips back in space, flat back. Go into your cape. Then reset for your balance. Come down towards the floor. You need to engage the core with these ones. A little bit of a softness in the knee. Lift. Bend, hips back. Bringing in a few cheese. It's kind of a one leg deadlift. <laughs> if you want the technical gym term. Last time. Shoulder press, keep engaging, keep pulling in the core muscles. Ski jump. Brilliant. Should be feeling quite warm. We've got one more, which was with the calf raise and the heel lift. So transfer the weight over onto one foot. I know you can't see my feet, but you, I want you to see my arms. So engage pelvic floor, engage TVA. So we're balancing all on one foot. Then we can add the arms up, lateral raise, shoulders down and back. Lift the heels and then turn the palms over and then release it back down. This is quite hard. So it's lift, you can just keep working lift and then switch it, lift, and then just switch it each time. So just a little switch with the wrists. And this is super tricky, heel lifts. Doesn't have to be super high. Keep engaging pelvic floor, TVA. <laughs> Gotta find a focus point. One more. Then literally switching sides. So first find your balance. Use your big toe. Pelvic floor. Squeeze the glutes. Maybe a little bit of shape on the arms. <laughs> then adding in Palms down, palms up, it doesn't really matter, go into heel, lift and lift, and then switch, ready to go again. <laughs> Keep engaging, pelvic floor and TBA. Again, noticing if your shoulders are starting to go forwards or starting to go back, so keep trying to think about shoulders down and back. Couple more. Releasing that down, I reckon that's one of the hardest ones we do. Bring the weights down, make your way down to the mat. We'll go for a downward dog, so. Find that stretch on the backs of the shoulders, top of the back, hamstrings. And I'll meet you there. One second, just get my camera in the right place. Okay, send your hips up towards the ceiling. Maybe walk through your dog if you're a little bit tight in your hamstrings, calf muscles. Try and keep your feet hip width apart. Head in between your arms. Spiral your biceps towards each other. So it's almost like your inner elbows are kind of you're sending them towards each other and then up. 
spread the fingers. And just taking a couple of deep breaths, if you can, in through the nose and out through the nose. It's quite energizing to take a downward dog. And we've been doing the last couple of weeks, so we'll add in again if you choose, is take the left leg, spin it, bring it forwards, knee to nose, and then extend to a one-legged dog, and you can bend that knee, open the hip. Then bringing that across to the left, elbow, and then lifting again. If it all feels like a bit too much, just stick with your downward dog and walking, pressing your heels down. Then the right elbow, then you're gonna step that left foot forwards to what would be like a high lunge, but we're gonna stay quite low and bring your left elbow um, into the inside of your left leg. And from there, just walk your hands forwards. So they're reaching towards the front of the mat. It's like a lizard stretch and you can go right up onto the toes. So like it's a massive hip flexor stretch and kind of long stride type stretch opening with the hip and you can just keep edging fingers or hands you can keep walking them away from the body try not to hold the breath then walking the hands back towards that left foot but just spin and take the right hand off the mat go on to the fingertips and take the chest stretch so left hand up to the ceiling couple of deep breaths here and you can kind of almost kind of tip towards that left hip to get that little bit more of that hip flexor eye gaze up chest muscles can get so tight in our modern modern life <laughs> stretching the out so important so bringing it all back and take it back to dog either walking through or taking the right leg, knee to nose, and then extend, opening out, and then you can bring it across to the right elbow. Otherwise, maybe you're just walking through dog, enjoying the stretch on the hamstrings and the calf muscles over to the right elbow, opening. Try and keep the shoulders square to the front of the mat, bringing that right foot forwards to that high lunge position, then bringing the arms to the inside of the right knee and then you can just start playing with walking the hands forwards and pushing back through that back heel on the left the left leg and you can think about straightening that left leg as well so put that tension all through the quads and the hip flexors try not to hold the breath or look back behind you so keep that head in line with the spine Take a deep breath. Then left hand off the mat, up onto fingertips. Put in your chest stretch, your twist. Eye gaze up. Take a deep breath. You can tilt over to that right side. Last time then send the hips back up into a downward dog position. Perhaps a little walk through and just see if you feel any better here. Maybe you can get your hips higher. Maybe you feel more of a stretch on the backs of the legs. Maybe you're connecting now more to the stretch on the backs of the shoulders. One more deep breath in dog. And then just lower yourself down onto all fours, hands under shoulders, knees under hips. And we're gonna take a little stretch here. So we'll go for a cat to cow. So tuck the toes under, drift the chest forwards, take the shoulder squeeze, look forwards. That's the cow position, tilt the pelvis. Still engage pelvic floor and TVA. Then you can lift up to cat, chin to chest, pull the tummies in, feel the stretch on the tops of the top of the back between the shoulders. And then just up to you, just flow through, breathe in on cow. Breathe out for cat. I would try and keep some control in cow. So I would think about pulling in pelvic floor, TVA, drift the chest forwards. And just notice if how pulling in the core helps you not to extend too far into the lower back.
last one, whichever one that you're going through, then bring it to neutral spine. So really thinking about TVA and pelvic floor pulling in. So we did this one again, we did this one last week. So if you've got the weights, you can put the weights behind the left knee and just a bit of a squeeze, hamstring and, <laughs> and the, the calf muscle. You know, I think it could work with a tip of eight beams too, right? So finding ourselves in that neutral spine, pulling in, and then it's just lifting up that left foot towards the ceiling. So if you can keep it flexed, so not flo like not floppy, a little bit of flexion in the ankle and lowering. And obviously you've got to hold the weight in there too. Now let's just notice as we lift up that foot and that knee, if we're arching in lower back, because the challenge here is to keep the lower back really still and not to tilt in the hips. So it's engaging with the core. Staying nice and still. Breathing out, lift. Breathing in, lower. Two more, and then we're going to switch sides. So literally switch that weight over, squeeze it, check your hip width with your knees, with your feet. And then it's exactly the same thing. It's into that lift and lower, try not to arch in the lower back. Think about the TVA, think about pelvic floor. So exactly the same move you can do this without the weight, the same focus, hips still. Core pulled in. Just going for about eight to ten of these repetitions. Breathing out to lift. Try not to look back down at the legs. So think about that crown of the head in line with the spine. Sometimes it's tempting just to everything to drop and then kind of ruins our posture work a little bit. So release from there. And we'll go to the left leg again, but this time we're going to bring the weight into the right hand. I'm just moving so I've got more space on the right side of my body. So you need a little bit of space to the side. Extending the left leg. But this time it's a straight leg extension and then the, left, the right arm lifting to the side with the weights or without weights if you haven't got any weights. As you do your leg lift. Same thing, hips super still. You're pulling in TVA, you're not arching the lower back. Should feel that squeeze there on the left glutes. Breathing out to left. Breathing in to lower. Then we're gonna take the weight forward. So it's just that low handshake extend and lower. So this is the hardest one really because it's that full extension. The lower back will wanna tilt and, and arch. Depending on how heavy you've got as well, it's quite tricky if you've got a heavy weight. <laughs> Again, crown of head in line with spine. Two more, breathing out left, breathing in lower, and last one. Release, we'll go to the other side. So, straighten the right leg, then work into your squeezing the right glute, lift and lower. And, and if you need to do a few of those just to get the hips still. Going for that. If you're ready to add in, take the weight into your left hand or lifting your left hand to the side and lowering. Sometimes kind of interesting if you notice if one side's a little bit trickier than the other. Like I can feel myself drifting uh, with this second side. So I'm gonna pay extra attention here to the TVA and I'm gonna pull in. Breathing out, lift, breathing in, lower. If you can, try and keep the legs straight so you work with really long levers at this point. Try not to arch in that lower back. Then we work into that extension so that left hand goes to the hand, low handshake and then extend and lift away from the body. Breathing out, lift, breathing in, lower. By this point, you should feel the right glute squeezing 
Engaging. Notice if you're holding your breath, so breathing out to lift, breathing in to lower. Try not to arch the lower back, pull in that TVA, pull in the tummy button. Two more. Release and we just put the waist to the side, step the left foot forwards to a low lunge. And just allow a minute here, let the hips sink down. Then you can kind of tie the thighs together, so start squeezing thighs together. Check you're kind of on a railway track here, so you're not on a balance beam, you've got it all hip grip. So it's kind of not a challenging balance too much. Then palms together. Pressing palms together, so it's like thinking about connecting left and right sides of the brain. Then if you want, bring in a twist, so right elbow just drawing across towards the left knee. Maybe placing it for, down on the knee. And then you can kind of really think about the spine here and the head. So if you can just keep that head in line with the spine. And the crown of the head in line with the spine here as well. And you can kind of work on your twist by pressing elbow into knee. So if you can find your pelvic floor and pull in the TVA at this point. If you find that pulling in the tummy button might help with your twist. So if you can just take it a little bit further around. Last breath. Then we're just going to switch sides. So stepping back to all fours and then bring that right foot forwards. Again onto that railway track. Let the hip sink down, get the hip flexor stretch. Then maybe a little bit of squeeze, thighs together, pull in the core, palms together. Pressing them together, take the shoulders down and back. Then if you choose, put in your twist, the left elbow down onto right, right knee. And you can really hinge yourself around, pressing in. Thinking about the crown of the head in line with the spine. Thinking about the wallpaper, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Couple of deep breaths. Then we're going to spin that all the way back around, slip it back to all fours and then just bring yourself all the way down onto the mat, onto your fronts. Just elbows underneath your shoulders and just relaxing your hands for a minute. This is a sphinx, called a sphinx stretch. So pull in pelvic floor and pull in TVA. Maybe get a tilt on the pelvis. And I want you to really, really squeeze a little bit on the tummy button TVA. So really pulling in. And just take a moment here Take your shoulders down away from your ears and thinking about lifting the ribcage forwards, crown of the head in line with the spine. It's quite a nice, as a gentle way of stretching, kind of with the lower back. Adding in, just tuck the toes under, lift up the kneecaps. So engage the quadriceps, lift up the kneecaps. And I want you to imagine now, as so a push back through your heels, and almost imagine that you're like lengthening your spine at this point. Crown of the head. You're sending your crown head up and forwards and your, the backs of your feet and the heels you're sending back. Keep lifting up those kneecaps. Try not to hold the breath. Then just totally relax the feet, put the kneecaps back down, legs relaxed, still putting in the core. Then if you choose a little bit more, straightening the arms, take yourself to a mini cobra. So looking forwards. Lift up chest, take shoulders back. So really nice stretch here for the abdominals, that's where you should be feeling it. Maybe a little bit on the lower back. Try not to hold the breath. Then release yourself all the way back down. Cactus off your arms, we're gonna go for a swan dive. So forehead down, breathing out, lift head and shoulders, breathing in lower. 
and then keep working. Notice if you're pressing hard there into the floor or the mat. See if you can take some lightness. Almost like your arms aren't really touching the mat. Using the muscles at the top of the spine for this eye gaze still down. Adding in, you can lift up those arms, that cactus position, and lowering. Still thinking about engaging the muscles at the top of the back. Notice if you're still connecting with pelvic floor. So imagine you've got an ice cube just sitting there underneath your tummy and you just, oh, lifting and squeezing in your tummy. Remembering the ice cube. Adding in then, it's breathing out left. And then reaching forwards. Then come back to the cactus and lower. Three breaths, okay, so breathe out left. Breathe in to prepare. Breathing out, extend. Come back to cactus and release. And if you find this one particularly hard, maybe think of something like a nice image, like maybe a big hug on the extension, just so your brain connects this move with something good, positive. Two more. Try not to hold that breath at any point. Still have the ice cube underneath your tummy button. And the release for that one is your cat stretch. So back on all fours, chin to chest, tuck that pelvis under, pull the tummy muscles in. And you want to here to send the breath right between the shoulder blades. Like the fullest of in-breaths that you can take. One more breath. Check on the time. <laughs> okay, so from there we'll come down to the front leg. Pull elbows underneath your shoulders. You can have a weight ready just at the top of your mat. Because we might use that if you want to bring it in. Pelvic, pelvic floor and TVA lifting of the hips. So hovering. And go back to train tracks on the knees. So knees and feet are hip width. They're not on the balance beam. Big squeeze here on TVA and pulling in the pelvic floor. Just so that the lower back doesn't arch. Notice if you're holding the breath. If you want to go straight into the challenge, you can straighten legs at this point. Up to you, how you feel. And we're going to go for 30 seconds. I'm going to keep you holding because it'll end up being a minute. So you can add in, you can take the bicep curl. So you lift up your weight or you can do it without the weight. And then just like, as if you're showing off your muscles to somebody. <laughs> or you're just showing them off in the mirror. <laughs> so you can work into the bicep curl. Or you can just simply be holding this plank position and squeezing, focusing on that TVA, pulling in pelvic floor, whilst not holding the breath. So lots of options and you could be doing that with legs straight. And again, just notice if you're holding the breath. 10 seconds to go, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, and one. Lower it down. Release that with the child's pose to sit back onto your heels. Maybe a little wiggle side to side. Bring your forehead down to the mat. Just release your elbows to the sides, or if you prefer, arms down by your sides to relax your shoulders. And go back to some really deep breaths. So as you breathe in, just imagine a ball of light there at the tailbone. And then you're going to send it all the way up the spine, right to the third eye between the eyebrows. So you're almost again working with these really massive inhales. Like 
like you just your lungs are like a balloon and you're just blowing it up to the max. Four more deep breaths. So from there, we're going to go onto our sides. Again, you need the one weight just um, handy, so in front of you, so picking at any side is fine. So last week, we did a one leg circle from a low position. If you want to change it and you want to add in, you could take a side plank and then take the circle from that position. So I'll, I'll leave it up to you. I'll, I'll put it down to where it was last week. So bending the lower leg, leg straight, pull in pelvic floor, pull in TVA, and it's just a really small circle, like the size of a small melon, like a gala melon. Honeydews are a bit oval shape, aren't they? Water, or maybe a small watermelon. Keep connecting with pelvic floor and TVA. So you, you could be like up in this position if you prefer. There was the option in there to take a bit more of a side plank if you want to. Lots of control. So breathing in, breathing out for each circle. Don't rush these circles. Like the slower, the better. Other way around if you haven't done so already. Try and keep the hips still. They're not really opening with this. It's very kind of a glute me kind of exercise this. Tying the core to kind of the, round the glutes and round the hips. So release, bend the knees, and we'll go for a clam. So feet in line with your hips and your shoulders. You can tilt yourself forward slightly, and then lift the top knee and lower. And it's the same thing. The hips don't really particularly open on this one. It's lots of control. It's round the back with the glute med. Keep checking on TVA. Sometimes we go on our side, we lose that TVA. And we did it last week, we put in the scapula set. So Place your elbow on your waist and then you can just lift and just send your thumb to the back of the room. So it's lift and lower. So I have to give you this one in your warm up. So it's quite nice to do a single arm on that and you can put the weight in there. And then the challenge is if you just lift the elbow off your waist. So then you've got to control the scapula set. You've got to control the core muscles and the hip opening. So I just thought for a bit of a challenge, you could switch it all over, couldn't you? So you could go down when the knee comes up, up when the knee comes down. <laughs> ah. That's quite nice. <laughs> Again, controlling the elbow, it will want to wobble and move. So it's a good good exercise for the shoulder. Sending the thumb back in space. Or if you've got like a, the free weight, the dumbbell bit goes backwards. Just two more. Breathing out. <laughs> Release. And then we're going to finish with a side plank. Option there, elbow under shoulder, lift up hips. And it's just a gigantic start. So go for like the biggest stretch you can get. Like, just send the leg away from your body. Send the hand away from your body. Like you've just sacked your feet and your hand. You've sacked them, they've got to get away from you. If you want the full thing, hand under shoulder. Take it a little bit higher and bring in balance. We're going to go for 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Pull in the core muscles. 4, 3, 2, one, and just releasing it all the way down. Switch sides. Spin it around. We start with that circle on the side. Then the bottom knee, or if you're high, if you're up on your side plank, take the side plank again. 
Fine pelvic floor, fine TBA. Find the small watermelons. Take the circles. Hip still. And just kind of, you can notice as well with this move is do you prefer to circle it kind of just in front of the midline of the body? So if I take a direct line down my hips, I'm generally, my foot goes towards the front. So maybe I might want to just explore the circles a little bit more around the back as well. So just notice that often we're looking down at our feet and that sends the foot a little bit more forwards. And you can kind of think about circling kind of straight down and then a little bit back. So just explore the space a little bit with your circles. Keep the control in your hips, keep drawing in the core. Other way around. And try not to look down there at the leg, which is tricky because you've got to think about where you're circling. Breathing in, breathing out for each circle. Don't rush these. Two more. Then bending the knees, feet in line with hips and shoulders. Just tilt that, that top hip over and then lift the top knee and lower. And kind of going from the one leg circle into the clams, almost like a release because we've gone from extension into bending, which is quite nice sometimes. Often I give it the other way around. Keep checking TVA pelvic floors in. And then straight away you can put in your scapula set. Do it first with the elbow down, get the kind of motion going, the external motion on the shoulder. And you could do like, I've done it opposite, haven't I? Knee up and then my hand up. Or you could go both together. <laughs> I don't know which one's harder. Put in the weight if you choose. Again, you've got to keep the control. So. Notice if you, left, if you lift the elbow up off the waist, like how wobbly that goes. <laughs> and you've just got to control the elbow. If you haven't switched it, just have a little go. Maybe do the opposite or the same, whichever one that you weren't doing, just to try it out. <laughs> it's good to be curious. <laughs> Again, double check, pelvic floor's pulled in. Squeezing in the TBA. Two more. Breathing out. Whew. Release that down and get ready for the side plank. Again, whichever position that you chose before. Elbow into shoulder. Lifting up the hips to take a big star position. That was that option. The full one hand underneath your shoulders, a bit more of a balance on the forearm. And then taking a big star, lifting up that leg. You're gonna go for 10 seconds. 10, nine, eight, seven, six. Try and keep the crown of the head aligned with the spine. Five, four, three, two, one, and release. <laughs> Bring it all down, lying on your backs then. I'm just gonna adjust one of these cameras. Lying your back, ready for a little bit more focus on the abdominals. Again, just have your weights nearby. Maybe one each side. Need a little bit of a space either side of the body. Bend the knees. Perhaps a pelvic tilt, find neutral spine. Arms up towards the ceiling. And again, you can put your weight straight in or you could do a couple without. Open both arms out to the sides. So it's a really nice opening on the chest and then lifting back up. Imprint the lower back down, so connect with the pelvic floor, connect with the TBA. Obviously you can put in your weights to that one. Opening, obviously I've got the wall, so I'm doing a bit of a dodgy move on one side. <laughs> Just notice the back of the neck here. So if you feel like your chin is going up to the ceiling, dip your chin down to your chest or even putting a pillow underneath your head. So that kind of works with the top of the spine. And notice as well, if you, when you come down to your chest, chest press or your chest fly, that your chest isn't flaring open. So we're kind of knitting the ribs together. So try not to let the ribs super open. 
and we can add to this. It's opposite knee, opposite hand dropping down, and then resetting. Opposite arm, opposite knee, drops down to the floor to the side, and resetting. And try not to let the hips open on this, so the other knee points to the ceiling. It's all about pelvis stability, core muscles. So it's a little bit of a, it's quite a nice kind of inner thigh stretch with that one. Still knitting ribs together, still imprinting. And notice as well, the other, the foot that's kind of on the mat might grip the toes, which is fine. That's all connecting feet to glutes to core. Keep imprinting lower back down. Keep using that length at the back of the neck. And then just a couple, you could try, so take the soles of the feet almost together, opening both knees, opening both arms, and then coming back up. But notice as the knees drop out to the sides, the lower back isn't arching. So imprint lower back down, and the aim of the knees dropping to the sides isn't to get them all the way down to the mat. It's kind of a bit more about control. So imprint, Pull in pelvic floor, pull in TBA. So it's just seeing whether if when the arms go out, when the knees go out, we can still control what happens with the core muscles and the lower back and the rib cage. Last one. And that's lowering. Then arms up to the ceiling, keep the knees bent, and just lift the arms up as high as you can to the ceiling so the shoulders are like reaching up and then pressing, let the weights drop and then pressing it back down, imprint the shoulders down. So lift, so this is a little stretch here, shoulder release, and then allow them to press back down. If you haven't got weights, you can bring in the twist. So twist, palms out, and then lift, and then bring in the lower. So it's a little bit easier, it's a bit tricky with the weights, and not very comfortable. So with weights, just work at pushing those weights up to the ceiling, and then allowing the weights to drop back down into the shoulders. Length there at the back of the neck, try not to let the chin lift up to the ceiling. Still imprint, so still pull in pelvic floor and TBA, holding a neutral spine. And lowering, one more. And a lift. One, uh, I mean press the um, shoulders down, sorry. Then one leg up to the ceiling small circles with that leg. We've been doing this now for a few weeks. The control should be coming now. The other knee should stay nice and still up to the ceiling. The core is pulled in for one way and then for the other. Imprint that lower back down. You can start to explore these circles like as in the space, maybe a little bit bigger, a little bit lower a little bit wider, but the controls there in the pelvis and the hips. The other knee doesn't turn out. And then switching sides. Notice if the weights start drifting over the head. I noticed that quite a few times with me. So try and keep the weights in the same position, shoulders imprinting, switching legs. And again, beginning to explore with these circles a little bit now. I think I've done this for three weeks, so we should be able to hold that imprint, that knee still. We should be able to focus on the core as we circle, other way around, trying to hold the breath. Knitting ribs together. Nice and slow with these circles, last one. Then just place uh, the arms down by your sides, give them a little bit of a rest from the weights for a second. Take a heel slide, so slide one heel away and then bend. Other side, hips still. I'm gonna go into our single leg stretch. So we've got the option as well, and I'll put in the weights as well. Option at this point, if you choose, take your tabletop position. So imprint lower back pelvic floor and TB engaged, and then heel, uh, almost heel slide, single leg stretch from tabletop down. Shoulders relaxed, palms up. So that's one kind of nice option. 
Next one, I'm going to bring you, say, let's say your heel sliding is palms together. I'm just bringing that over and across to the bent knee and then planting shoulders back down. Almost drawing around like a semicircle here to get that shoulder to dip round. And then you can do exactly that in the tabletop, coming around. Now, if you choose, you can put the weight into this. So placing the weight between your hands, prayer, like your pet prayer hands, and you could bring that across to that bent knee and lower. It is quite intense, so just taking that, if it suits you, if it feels sensible. <laughs> All engaging pelvic floor TVA and again you can do that up on tabletop. Go to try and keep that control. It's the breathing out lift, breathing in lower. That's the I can hear the grandfather clock ticking, I mean chiming, so that would mean that it would eight o'clock so I am going to go over a little bit because I've got a few moves left so I hope that's going to be okay if it's not totally fine catch me up on the end of the video if you can last one then just take the weights to a cactus position so elbow is to the sides of your shoulders lifting up like a chest press and then bending it that bringing that back down breathing out lift breathing in lower Shoulders down, away from the ears. Imprinting again. And we're going to add in, so we're going to go to a double leg stretch. So as the uh, elbows come down, extend both legs away. And then when you come in, lift up into your chest press. Extend. And then lifting up. Extend. Again, thinking about that chin, so try not to let the chin lift up to the ceiling. Find the length there at the back of the neck. We're going to do a little bit of an add in for this. So when you extend, you could crisscross, perhaps four times with the stomach, extend with the legs, crisscross, and then bend, then drifting across to one side, and then extend. Drifting across to the other side. Extend, stretch the backs of the hamstrings. Then lifting up. Down, double leg stretch, crisscross, bend, twist, extend. So we're just throwing in that spine twist. Chest press, and then extend, crisscross, bend, cross, spine twist. Nice little release in the middle of that move. Keep breathing out, especially as you're doing a double leg stretch crisscross. Last time. Spine twist. Exhale. <laughs> Lowering that all the way down and then just walk your heels so they're a little bit closer, you can touch your heels. Take a pelvic tilt, so this is almost like a release uh, massage for the lower back. Finding pelvic floor, finding that squeeze for TVA, putting tummy button in, down to the mat. And then we're going to go into the shoulder bridge. And again, you can put the weights in like we did last week. So up to you if you want to bring them in straight away, if you want to do a, a, a raise without them to start with. Lifting up the hips, then bring the arms up over the head. Obviously, you choice there for the free weights. Then we added it in last week, the single leg stretching away. Then you can just work with these arms, bringing them down, lifting them back up. Hips, super still, squeezing glutes three times with the arms. Try not to hold the breath. Arms over, get that length there at the back of the neck. Spine in one nice long line. We're 
bring the arms all the way down and articulate down through the spine and then lifting back up for the other side. So just give yourself a massage in the middle of that move. Then lifting back up, again, arms back over. Length at the back of the neck, chin to chest. Lifting up one leg, squeezing in the glutes. And then adding the arms up and over. Hips super still, the hips will wanna tilt on this. <laughs> Try not to let the hip drop. Try not to let the shoulders tilt. Lower. Keep breathing. And lift. And then when you're ready, you're bringing everything all the way back down. Vertebrae by vertebrae. Hug knees into chest, a little bit of a rock or a circle. And then just see if you can rock yourself up to a seated position. And we did, again, we're going to do a very similar one to last week, so flex the feet. Take a moment, just take a heart stretch, so your hands down by your hips and just take your shoulders back and really think about lifting up the heart nice and high. Find some length at the back of the neck. You could almost really work at lifting like your bum off the mat. Still connect with pelvic floor and TVA. It's almost a lovely little squeeze for the shoulder blades. Quite a nice way to adjust posture if you've been sitting down or shoulders forwards quite a lot. Take a couple of deep breaths. Then we're going to go for the roll down. We're going to take the scapula set, so take the thumbs back, elbows tucked in, and then circle that all the way around. Vertebrae by vertebrae, half an hour, all the way down if you choose. Reach to your full body stretch, then come up and then sort of slide your fingertips along your legs so you can come up to a seated position. And then again, you can put the straight away if you want, you can put the weights into that. So opening, scapula set, roll down, vertebrae by vertebrae, and then reaching round, expand to that full body stretch, then bringing that forwards, coming back up. And then again. So with control, opening and coming up. Just two more. Tracing that big circle around the body. If you can keep the feet flat, so it just keeps those hamstrings engaged. Keep engaging with the core. Last one. Breathing in to lift, chin into chest. Facing this way then, cross the legs. If you need to grab a block or anything, or cushion, just need to be nice and upright. Palms together, again thinking about left, right side of the brain, linking in, connecting. Thinking as well, when you press the palms together, it helps the shoulders get a little bit of kind of leveling, take the shoulders down away from ears. So breathing in, get nice and tall, crown of the head to the ceiling, and then breathing out, just a very small twist, doesn't need to be very far. And then breathing in center, and breathing out for your twist. If you choose, you could bring in your yogic breath. So as you breathe in, breathe in through your tummy and then send it all the way up, a bit like we did in child's pose. And just notice if you can get a little bit taller on the in-breath. And then as you exhale, you can think about pulling the core muscles in. Two more, breathing in to get nice and tall, breathing out, pulling the core muscles in, twisting.
And the last one, straighten the legs, flex the feet. Big bowl of porridge, so stirring that porridge one way. And then go back round the other way. And then it's a hip lift, so take the left hand behind, a bit of like a star position, just lifting up the hips, it's a really nice stretch. And then again, porridge one way, porridge the other way, nice little spiral. And then into the lift, flex the feet there. So it's a nice little hamstring engager. Porridge one way, porridge the other way. And lift. Maybe we're reaching towards the toes. One more time, each way, each hand down. And then last one. Porridge green one way, porridge green the other way. And left. <laughs> Bringing the feet together, palms together. Namaste.